now with a shift study presented by Professor Comanche from Paris. The shift trial results presented during the first hotline of ESC 2010 are among the big scientific advances of this meeting. The aim of the study was to evaluate the impact of pure heart rhythm reduction on major heart failure outcomes. In shift, we enrolled 6,505 patients who were analysed, and this was by large the largest clinical trial ever conducted in chronic heart failure. To be included in the trial, patients had to have moderate to severe heart failure with an ejection fraction of 35% or less and a heart rate greater than 70 beats per minute. All received recommended therapy, which included beta blockers for 90% of them. They were randomised to receive either evabridine or a placebo and the average follow-up time was 23 months. The results are very positive because we were able to show that evabradine reduced significantly the occurrence of the primary outcome, which was made of cardiovascular mortality or hospitalizations for heart failure, and the risk reduction was 18%, and it occurred very early during the course of the trial. If you look at the hospitalization component of this primary outcome, that is hospitalizations for heart failure, it was very impressively reduced by 26%. And another very important outcome in heart, in heart failure is heart failure deaths, and it was also reduced by 26%. Shift will have an important impact on the daily management of patients because one of the lessons is that we do not pay enough attention to heart rate in heart failure patients, probably, and two, that the subgroup of heart failure patients and low ejection fraction who remain with an elevated heart rate is very important. To complete these findings, Michael Berm presented in Stockholm an analysis to determine how heart rate at baseline and heart rate lowering treatment predict outcomes in patients with heart failure. We roughly estimate 50 to 60 percent which have heart rates and are in sinus rhythm with heart rates above 70. When these patients are optimally treated, they still have a high event rate, but when these patients are treated in addition to optimal treatment with a heart rate reducing agent like Evabradine, then we will achieve a further reduction of risk. The focus update of ESC guidelines on device therapy in heart failure were developed with the special contribution of the Heart Failure Association and the European Heart Rhythm Association and were presented for the first time in Stockholm by Kenneth Dickstein, the chair of their task force. Patients with milder symptoms now may be eligible for the first time for a device and we have restricted our recommendations to the population we believe most likely to respond the second would be with atrial fibrillation, this very large population uh, without formal recommendations previously now has very specific recommendations and I believe that's very, very important. And then I would suspect that since it's the first time that we have an assist device, a left ventricular assist device for seriously ill patients with severe heart failure, uh, I'm very pleased that we finally made a formal recommendation in that field. The Your Observational Research Programme is an ambitious series of registries recently set up by the ESC. On heart failure, the pilot study has already been conducted and reported for the first time during ESC 2007 in synchrony with its publication in the European Journal of Heart Failure. 136 centres in 12 European countries contributed to this work. We collected data in more than 5,000 patients. The three main observations from the clinical point of view were that, one, uh, it is necessary probably to improve the classification, the definition of the clinical profile of patients with acute heart failure. The second message is that uh, even if cardiologists are uh, compliant, adherent to guidelines in terms of prescription, of uh, some classes of drug, the dosages of uh, these drugs are at least suboptimal. And the third message, in my opinion, is that uh, the use of devices 
still uh, not uh, optimized in Europe.